Good to see everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation of Daily News. Glad you all could be with us. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday with a message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you can part of my conversation with writer and director Alex Hanno. You guys can find him here on Instagram, discussing the year that's been 2022 and what's to come. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation of Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb, but there are Tuesday headlines in international news. Zelensky calls liberation of Kherson beginning of the end. President Zelensky triumphantly walked the streets of the newly liberated city of Kherson on Monday, hailing Russia's withdrawal as the beginning of the end of the war, but also acknowledging the heavy price Ukrainian troops are paying in their grinding effort to push back the invaders. The retaking of Kherson was one of Ukraine's biggest successes in the nearly nine-month-old war, dealing another stinging blow to the Kremlin. It could serve as a springboard for more advances into occupied territory. President Joe Biden called it a significant victory for Ukraine. I can do nothing but applaud the courage, determination, and capacity of the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian military, he said on the sidelines of a group of 20 summit in Indonesia. They've really been amazing. We're going to continue to provide the capacity for the Ukrainian people to defend themselves. Large parts of the eastern and southern Ukraine are still under Russian control, and the city of Kherson itself remains within reach of Moscow's shells and missiles. Heavy fighting continued elsewhere in Ukraine. Russia's state news agency reported a Russian-held territory across the Napa River from Kherson came under heavy artillery fire. Zelensky awarded medals to soldiers in Kherson and posed with them for selfies while striking a defiant note. This is the beginning of the end of the war, he said. We are step by step coming to all the temporarily occupied territories. But he also grimly noted the fighting took the best heroes of our country. The end of Russia's occupation of the city, the only provincial capital seized since the February invasion, has sparked days of celebration. But as winter approaches, its remaining 80,000 residents are without heat, water, and electricity, and short on food and medicine. Zelensky says the city is laced with booby traps and mines, and the Ukrainian authorities say there were signs of atrocities emerging, just as in other liberated areas. Russian forces destroyed everything in their path, wrecked the entire electricity network, he said. Communications operators said cell phone service was being restored, and the regional governor said a public wireless internet access point will begin working today. In national news, suspect caught in fatal shooting of three University of Virginia football players. A University of Virginia student shot and killed three members of the school's football team as they returned from a field trip, authorities said, setting off panic and a 12-hour lockdown of the campus until the suspect was captured on Monday. The violence that erupted near a parking garage late Sunday also wounded two students. Police searched through the night for the gunman. Officials got word during a morning news briefing that the suspect, a 22-year-old, had been arrested. Just give me a minute to thank God. Breathe a sigh of relief, the university police chief said after learning the suspect was in custody. Conversations Daily News has made the decision not to name the shooter. The shooting happened just after 10.15 p.m. on Sunday as a charter bus full of students returned from seeing a play in Washington. The university president, Jim Ryan, said authorities did not have a full understanding of the motive or circumstances surrounding the shooting. In more national news, Kentucky school bus crashed 18 students, drivers sent to hospitals. A school bus crashed over an embankment and landed on its side Monday morning in rural Kentucky, sending the driver and 18 children to hospitals with injuries ranging from minor to severe, authorities said on Monday. Students from elementary age through high school were aboard the bus en route to classes when the crash occurred on a state highway in eastern Kentucky, said the superintendent Chris Meadows. No other vehicles were involved. In more national news, appeals court ruling keeps Biden's student debt plan on hold. President Joe Biden's plan to forgive student loan debt from millions of borrowers was handed another legal loss on Monday when a federal appeals court panel agreed to a preliminary injunction halting the program while an appeal plays out. The ruling by the three-judge panel from the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Louis came days after a federal judge in Texas blocked the program, saying it usurped Congress's power to make laws. The Texas case was appealed, and the administration is likely to appeal the 8th Circuit ruling as well. And finally, in entertainment news, John Aniston, star of Days of Our Lives, dead at 89. John Aniston, the Emmy Award-winning star of the daytime soap opera Days of Our Life, and father of Jennifer Aniston has died at the age of 89. 
The actor's daughter posted a tribute to him Monday morning on Instagram, announcing that he died Friday on Veterans Day. John Anderson served in the U.S. Navy. Sweet Papa, John Anthony Anderson, Jennifer Anderson wrote, You were one of the most beautiful humans I ever knew. John Anderson's acting credits include Search for Tomorrow, The West Wing, and Gilmore Girls, but he was best known for his long-running role on Days of Our Lives as family patriarch Victor Kiriakis. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Tuesday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Words I Choose to Live By. Pace yourself. It's not about how fast you get to the finish line. The important thing is to stay in the race until the end. So today, let's keep running. Have an amazing Tuesday. We are part of my conversation coming up with Alex Hanno in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with Entertainment Spotlight. Writer and director Alex Hanno joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about the year that's been 2022 as he geared up for the release of his TV pilot, Served. It's a bit of our conversation. What has it been like for you? I know you've been crazy busy, but what has it been like for you to kind of reflect on this year and all the great things that's been coming your way? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a great question. And, and I, I really try at the beginning of every year, you know, I'm not much for, um, you know, commitments each year saying, OK, this is a this, you know, resolution per se. But I do try to take some time at the beginning of each year and say, what, what do I want to focus on? You know, what do I want to try to put out there um, in hopes of, of kind of getting stuff uh, or having stuff come back to me, so to speak? Um, and I did, a, did that at the beginning of this year, and I, I p- kind of put some focuses out there. Um, and, you know, I think for, for anyone in the arts, um, specifically in film, oftentimes it's about planting seeds. And I've been doing that for the last few years, and it was cool this year to, to finally see some of these things come to fruition. Um, and obviously I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that today. but. You know, it's, it's been a tough couple of years um, for anyone uh, who really, for everyone, I think, but specifically for, for people in the arts who collaborate with other folks. I mean, filmmaking is an extremely collaborative process. And um, yeah, and for about two years, there was, there was really no opportunity to do that, um, especially I work in the indie world. Um, so for me, you know, I'm working on projects that don't have the same sort of budgets to allow for protocols to be followed, like they do with you know with larger TV or film projects. So it really meant um, a lot of a lot of alone time writing and, and kind of focusing on developing material so that um, as we've we've rebounded here, um, we can start to to get back to filming and and that's finally what I've been able to do, which is wonderful. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning into this edition of Conversations Daily News. We're about to go to some more more news. Message from my book, words that choose to live by, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your Cyrus Webb saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today, and let's go make it a great one.